Hey guys and girls, how's it going? Hope you guys have a great week. Uh, welcome to the Normandy News Feed podcast, your one-stop shop for all things gaming and geek culture related. Uh, we are back today with our end of the year podcast. It's December, guys. Where did that year go? Where the heck did 2020, 2023 went? It was an incredible year, to be fair, for games. And uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. But we're going to kick off the podcast today. Also, I am joined today uh, by Fish, Dante and Edge. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us for the... Uh, the last official Hello. podcast of uh, 2023 to so really appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, we are going to kick off today's podcast with the first part, which is what's new. How you holding up, Skipper? What is new? What, what is new? What is new? What's new? What up is new? <laughs> Like I'm going to make new. sure they every week. That's cute. I need every these little time. musical cues. That's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have these musical cues. So what have I been playing? Well, the first thing I played this month, and I literally jumped onto it like the day it was released, <laughs> uh, was the Final Fantasy 16 DLC, Echoes of the Fallen. Clive. Um, Clive, yes. Um, I absolutely loved Final Fantasy 16. Um, it's one of, in, in my top 10 list this year. Really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, the DLC dropped, like Shadow dropped at the Game Awards. It's like, oh, and it's out. Um, it's $7.99. I'm not sure it's worth that price point because I beat it um, in about four hours. So I'm not sure it's worth the £8 asking price, but I did really enjoy it, um, actually. Basically, there isn't really any story per se. It's more like you go to this tower and you're basically progressing your way up the tower and you're like taking on like new enemy types and there's new boss fights and that kind of thing. And like, you ha it's like a survival tower dungeon crawler type thing which just focuses on the combat which to be fair i was totally down for because the combat in final fantasy 16 is legit awesome <laughs> and um i was like when i jumped in i was like i don't know if, it's been a while since i've played this i don't know if i can jump straight back in i'm gonna die a lot and literally it was like i've been playing it all my life <laughs> I, I just like slipped right back into it um because that's how good the combat is and uh yeah even like as dante was sat next to me and there was like one bit where it was just everything was just synergizing and dodging and we ended it with a fist bump <laughs> at the end of the combat so um yeah it was really really good i recommend it i do think it's good um but i think it's probably better to get the expansion pass because the second dlc is coming out i think in spring next year and i think that's going to yeah. be uh bigger you know more expansive hopefully more story um but if you're looking for more combat new bosses and and for me the bosses are really good in final fantasy 16 like they definitely take a lot of the mechanics from final fantasy 14 in terms of like the pattern of attacks that you have to dodge and i was really enjoying that like a lot so i very much enjoyed it beat it in four hours in a single sitting in one night uh, which is really cool uh, and then the other thing that we've been playing uh, in preparation because we are planning to jump in and play alan wake 2 and it is one of the games i've asked for over christmas is basically the first alan wake game which we've never played before. Um, so we actually, Dante and I have been playing this together. So we've been playing an episode each. And uh, it's been chapter really each. fun. Yeah, chapter I, each. I, I, I dropped out of Alan Wake on the very first time I played it. I, it was the original. And I had to drive that goddamn car and the car <laughs> driving mechanics were yeah. just so awful. Not the best. I don't know if you're uh, playing the new one. Um, the, the revamped version? Remastered. Yeah, the remastered version. Yeah, we're playing I, the I can't say, version. can't say if the car driving mechanics have improved, but all I can remember in the original was it was so bad, I put the game down and never went back to it, because I was like, no. There aren't that many driving trip. sections. There's a couple, but there's not that many. There's one section that just goes on forever, though, and I was just like, nah, I'm <laughs> done with this. This is awful. <laughs> yeah i mean i'm kind of enjoying it like at first like i was like what the heck is going on like this story is all over the bloody place and just really weird um but it's now very we're stephen king. it's very stephen oh, yeah. king yeah and and uh, but now we're like maybe two two episodes before the end so we're maybe 70 percent through the game and now it's all starting to come together um i hate the fact though that it like 
steals all your weapons every episode and it's like oh where did your gun go i lost my guns and you have to like start the episode with like nothing i hate that shit um i hope they don't have that in alan wake too i really hope they don't but we'll, we'll see but yes yes so that's that's the other thing i've been playing so um fish what have you been playing uh anything uh, new or interesting? nothing new on the video game front mm. on the board game slash card game front however I was introduced to a rather nice little uh, Kickstarter game called The Necro Hamster. Um, <laughs> That's which adorable. Is, I love that name. It is a game where you literally compete with three other people to summon little creatures, each of which do a different thing. Oh, there's like God. rabbits, there's yeah. cats, and That's all these awesome. little things. The artwork on it is adorable. Um, it's all very black and white and ethereal. And yeah, it was just a fun little game very easy to learn mm. um and uh yeah it's been a bit of a quiet month for me um mm. i think the other thing on the month front which is worth mentioning is the delight that was doctor who returned to our screens i'm sure we've all watched <laughs> it by now yes um and i i was talking to my friend about it and he summarized it quite well in that it's a as a three-part 60th anniversary series, I think it's um, like, described as the best of Russell T. Davis in three episodes. Your first episode is a solid, family-friendly episode with a bit of a comic relief villain, but also entertaining enough. Mm. Your second episode is a genuinely dark and quite scary one. And your third episode is a high-stakes, big villain, you know, regeneration episode uh, yeah i was like you know what that that is pretty much three episodes the best of russell t davis writing style crowbarred right down so internet doesn't want any spoilers it's only been a week since the um, episode aired so i'll be good all i will say is uh it's once again sad to see tenant go because he's such a good doctor but at the same time from what we saw of shooty coming into the role i am looking forward to seeing the future episodes. I mean, our next full episode will be the Christmas one. Mm -hmm. uh, and I understand that the series will be back in full swing in May. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, I am looking forward to this. This is potentially back to hopefully a very good run of Doctor Who. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I loved seeing David Tennant and Catherine Tate together again. <laughs> They Catherine Tate was actually the icing on the cake. He was great she was brilliant. Chemistry. They have such great chemistry. It's awesome. And and what's his name as the toy maker was just fabulous. Oh, Neil, Neil Patrick, Patrick Harris. Harris. Neil yeah. Patrick stole Harris the show. stole the show. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Spice um, Girls song is brilliant. <laughs> spice Spice of Your Life, Neil Patrick Harris. Do you so know good. that the part where he was dancing around and he threw Kate into that wall i genuinely went oh wow. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, i watched that went, ow yeah it's like ow <laughs> it goes for spine very good though i enjoyed it a lot so dante what have you been other than alan wake with me <laughs> like what else have you been doing like the last one we've been ch brushing up on before new releases was uh i finally got to play uh the integrate chapter of Final Fantasy Remake. Yes. Yeah. Or intermission or whatever they call it. Yeah. yeah intermission, got... I think. Yeah. Yuffie's uh, story. Yeah. Yeah. You. Yuffie's like OP man. <laughs> Just She's on brilliant. The... She's yeah. Really I. Good. I really like how they mixed up the uh, combat and made little additions here and there, and even mm. tweaks to some of the old material. So, uh, from what I can tell, especially with the combination technique she had with the uh, with her partner, mm. it's like yeah, I can see where they're going with the next game and. It's looking to be good. So, yeah. I can't wait but... for Rebirth. <laughs> it's it's going to be good. I can't wait. I'm not going to lie. When We, we are going to talk about the Game Awards in this podcast, but when they play that song mm. with Aerith, I legitimately actually cried. I'm not kidding oh, you. No, no, I got emotional, no. and I've not even started the game. I am just <laughs> fucked. <laughs> like, completely. Um, but, yes, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's been <laughs> fun just to watch you play because it's just it's that good. It's just that good um yeah. so it's been fun to watch you play like all the way through 
uh, well, Crisis Core, right? And then Remake and then oh, Integrate. Yeah, with the crisis core. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's been really great. I've really enjoyed it. So I probably just will sit and watch you play Rebirth, which is fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's been great. Edge, what have you been playing in uh, December, November? Gosh, uh, let's see. So uh, Baldur's Gate 3, still been playing that at the moment. Uh, playing as a Albert. Um, <laughs> you playing a druid then? Around. Yeah, I'm playing a druid, but I, I'm literally a, like perma- permanent mode in Albert form, just running around. <laughs> What's and the character's nice. name? Nice. Uh, Miss Albert. Miss Albert. <laughs> to the point. Yeah, okay. uh, just literally stabs, done. Um, <laughs> it, it leaps around everywhere and just goes, and just like it's just majestic. Mm-hmm. Watching like Strife will say like, "What the hell?" When he just sees a giant Albert. Flying across the screen with like triple jump. I just got line... in my head the um, cartoon theme, Albert the Fifth Musketeer, but it's never Albert. Albert, <laughs> Albert. <laughs> a picture of an Albert running around. <laughs> I, I can't get that image out of my head now. <laughs> yeah. You so... you've said the word Albert so many times, it's just somewhat oh, broken yeah. my mind. That's funny. Is... I'm gonna see if I can it's find been... that cartoon. <laughs> Oh god, it's been so much fun, and then I've uh, just been replaying Monster Hunter Sunbreak with Strife. Ah, okay. Um, with the announcement of certain things we'll talk about later, mm-hmm. we've been going back into that mm-hmm. to complete the last few monsters, and uh, I have recorded myself fighting a Crimson Grove Alstrax, and it's terrifying. It's like a jet. A <laughs> Sounds jet terrifying. <laughs> it's a jet fighter mix of a dragon that shoots lasers. And like, it, didn't we try like, to take that? Is that the one that we tried to take on? It just absolutely decimated us. It was. This is the evolved version of that. Oh one. no! Okay. <laughs> it like, it just like it flies in the sky, space, and just comes out and kills you. Jesus! Like, what? It it's wasn't crazy. hardcore it. enough. That's crazy. Um, okay. And then, other than that, uh, been using the game pass a bit this this month, uh, mm-hmm. going through some old RPGs. So mm-hmm. been playing uh, Nino Kuni two because I thought mm-hmm. give it a try. Uh, yep. Playing the original Persona three. Mm-hmm. to get ready for the remake coming out next year mm-hmm. and uh, yeah just kind of going through some old classics really i guess at this point in time are you interested in that new persona 5 is it persona 5 tactics uh, or whatever it's called i haven't it's... tried it yet yeah i am going to public i mean it's on the game pass so i yeah. might download it and give it a go yeah it's like a completely new story follows on i think either it's set towards the end of the the main like persona 5 game and they get whisked to like another world or whatever. Um, mm. But it is like a whole completely original story from what I hear. Um, and it's like, oh, it's still turn based, of course, but the art style is very cutesy cutesy. But it looks kind of cool. I am kind of interested. Um, so if you do get around to playing it, let me know if it's any good. Um, oh, on there, because that's on Game Pass, which is also why I'm interested, because <laughs> I need to find more <laughs> games to play on Game Pass um cool cool so we've all been playing lots of different things um i've also been playing Baldur's gate 3 too i'm like 32 hours into my single player run on playstation 5 i've literally just gone into act 2 um <laughs> so yes yeah i just met jahira so i'm loving it i'm really loving it so uh it's a great game yeah um yeah so two lots of that way to too much bullshit, yeah yeah i know um that's what i hear but i'm looking forward to playing more Spit it out, or are you trying to build suspense? So, uh, in today's main feature, then, of course, we are going to talk about uh, the Game Awards, yeah? Um, and obviously what we thought of it. We'll talk about some of the winners uh, that came out of it, and of course, some of the announcements um, and games that we're interested in. So let's start off with our overall like impressions on the Game Awards, what we thought. Um, I'm not going to start, because I started the last section. So, uh, Edge, do you want to kick us off? What did you think of the Game Awards this year? Hmm. So, Game right. Awards. Um, do you know what? I get. I, I. I. can understand the. What it. What. Is where I'm going to say. I'm going to come out and just say it as it is probably. Which just go it. Just rip the bandaid off. Just say what you Tell think, them. dude. <laughs> I get that a lot of people watch the Game Awards purely for the content that's being announced. Yeah. And, and not. It's not as much emphasis on the celebrating of the talent that has come out of this year Mm -hmm. um there are people who generally will be watching it for that Mm -hmm. so i'm not speaking for everybody but i get that um 
because of the way that the announcements or the winners that were announced was a bit kind of short. So, I mean, for example, there were some winners that were announced where the speeches were literally like they were being kicked off. Yeah, so, please wrap it a, up is the meme that's as, going around. As someone who watches to see who's won, oh, yeah, no, I, I give them their chance to have that speech. Mm. But I can't lie and say, be a hypocrite and say, I'm not always watching it for the announcements as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope that the next year's Game Awards, they kind of find a nice balance. Because three hours, was like, dear God, that was just a long <laughs> thing. Yeah, I 100% agree with you, Edge. I do think that um, three and a half hours is too long. Um, but you're right. Like There are people that do just watch the Game Awards for the announcements. Um, but for me, I-, I just really think they got the balance completely wrong this year. Yeah. Um, and some of the announcements, I mean, like, you know, rather than they, I think they said they gave the, uh, winners like 30 seconds and they were all individually, like they were sent emails like prior to the, to the game awards to say, okay, this is how long you're going to get. And you've got to keep your speeches short and sweet. And then they were like queuing music in really quickly. And it just, it was really awkward and like and you know a game of the you know like the developers that made Baldur's Gate 3 and game of the year winner and you're only giving them 30 seconds and I think that is the problem again with the gaming industry as a whole Mm. it is there is no real appreciation for the people who do put in the hard work it's just basically about boom there's your thing here's your reward now excuse the language you know off you get off you get please wrap Uh, it up yeah. Yeah. Here's your here's your recognition. Now go. We want to sell the next thing, yeah, and yeah. that's that's. I would say that was the big impression from this year. Um, is yeah, they were talking about awards, but once again, it's not about the awards. The people who have put in all this hard work and all this effort are getting no real appreciation from. No, yes, they are from the fans but not from the industry. And it's the industry where these people are spending every day of their working lives. And if if that, that attitude will kill the gaming industry because you've got to have job satisfaction. Mm. I think, I think with the way that 2023 has been this year as well for a lot of, you know, for layoffs and game developers, it felt like more of a kick in the teeth for them. And (laughs) I think a lot of developers would have been even more sensitive to that. And, and there, you know, I think even, um, the, the CEO, you know, the, the head of, um, Larian studios, obviously the makers behind Baldur's Gate, he actually shared his, uh, full speech. He had an actual full speech and he shared it on Twitter and he was actually going to address things like layoffs and things like like that and what the year has been like for it for the industry um and how important it is you know every single person that's worked on that game and them now no longer being working you know i think he was talking about um D and and uh, different things and it's just it, it just is sad that they didn't talk about the important things just so they could show more stuff on like a gacha game or like yeah, more on Fortnite I, and stuff it's like and really? i think again i think again we take this time to reiterate the key point when nintendo was faced with that choice and iwata took a like 50 percent pay cut mm. so that they wouldn't have to lay people off or the heads of nintendo took like a 20 percent reduced pay they they took serious pay cuts to their annual income mm. so that they wouldn't have to lay people off mm. whereas people aren't doing that in the industry these days it's just a case of no sorry go away yeah. anywhere we can save money and make money this is why it it's the and i don't want to get too preachy on it but we're going down a dangerous path of corporate greed where can we get an ai to make something before you know it the gaming industry will have no soul because it will all be gacha games that have been AI generated to tap into the human desire to click mm. and click and win and press those buttons to give you your sweet, sweet little endorphin hits. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I know when Jeff, obviously Jeff Keefe, you know, started the game was it, it started with the best intentions, which was to actually, uh, you know showcase the developers and give them their moment and their recognition and. And I know it, I'm not saying it is hard, of course, to, to run a Game Awards. I know it's not easy to run such a huge event like that uh, and an international event like that. But 
and of course yes he has to have sponsors and he has to have funding and that's got to come probably from where all those advertisements come from to get that funding and to get that sponsorship but i feel in that chasing that sponsorship and celebrity it, it it's lost it's lost its heart of of what it actually is of and and, and i feel that jeff has lost he has forgotten like why he created the game awards in the first first place place. um and that's how i felt watching it um i felt i was kind of angry like for the developers like i I was quite yeah frustrated like you know watching it dante what what's your are you got anything i I started getting wound up by it yeah you did quite a while (laughs) it it was it was distasteful it was pretty much an insult to the word. main people they were supposed to be celebrating yeah. and instead it's all like jeff showing off his best mates and all that and getting his <laughs> yeah kissing kojima's <laughs> boots yeah and and then other people are kissing that ass he's instead a, and it's he's all got like, such a bromance you... for kojima hasn't he bless him <laughs> yeah. he loves him but then yeah and there's like oh we'll bring this celebrity on instead and start talking rubbish mm. and not actually concentrating on the games or or the people behind them i think the the worst point that where i really felt bad was when the voice actor from Baldur's gate was like giving a heartfelt speech oh yeah and they started playing that music yeah and originally i thought that was like oh they're going for a bit of emotion here and that no it was the get off the stage music Mm. i'm like you what It playing was over him disgusting. yeah he was making like a really important point like yeah. about like people finding themselves in Baldur's gate and obviously the you know the diversity like, and the choice yeah, and the, the freedom and that, that you have in that and the community mm. and uh it was a really heartfelt moment and uh i get it they don't want like an eight minute speech like we had last year like you know with the guy that uh played obviously um you know god of god of war um kratos but still 30 seconds really like you're taking the piss (laughs) like honestly um for me personally in terms of the presenters i don't want celebrities that are pretending to be game oh yeah you know i play games i like that game it's like fuck no like i don't want (laughs) celebrities presenting awards i would rather have like icons of the industry so I'd rather have Al Numa up there talking about game design and direction, right? Or Troy Baker up there talking about voice acting and the art of voice acting or Jennifer Hill or anyone else. Um, even Mark Mir. Mark Mir was up there and he didn't, he didn't have enough. I'd rather have industry icons up there that know their stuff and are passionate about the industry than some fake celebrity that just is trying to have their moment like to to sort of say oh we're cool too hollywood are into games because obviously they're doing all the adaptations now right for video mm-hmm. games it's like what hollywood does like hollywood is obs- was obsessed with superheroes and now they've bled that dry and now they're moving into video games and they're trying Which... to bleed that dry you know what i mean and it's that's how it feels to me i'm so cynical i know but that's how i feel which, which might be a good opportunity to talk into the um uh the awards themselves because one of the uh, awards this year best Best adaptation adaptation. so let's talk about the winners then yeah yeah because our our, our four best adaptation i mean they had as nominees castlevania gran turismo last of us super mario bros movie and twisted metal um and the winner was the last of us which you know i think given the lineup i'd say that's pretty fair um i'd I'd personally I'd like to say I think I preferred Castlevania to The Last of Us. No, but that's a, no, that's no. O- that's that's only as a personal <laughs> preference. As... 100 disagree on that one, but okay. And, and, but no, but again, that is it. Absolutely, don't get me that's wrong. I am no, not in. I'm I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying yeah. that The Last of Us was unworthy of it. Mm. I'm just saying my personal preference was I preferred Castlevania. Uh, um, have you played but... The Last of Us game? The first one, yeah, which yeah. Oh, right. I, absolutely, so, okay. and I, I was loved really it. disappointed by Castlevania this year. I didn't, I didn't find Nocturne 
but I didn't find the writing particularly good. It got good towards the end, maybe, mm. but I felt that it really sidelined the main character, <laughs> and like, and I just I didn't enjoy it as much as I had done the original Castlevania series. It, for me, it just felt a little contrived in places. Um, yeah, still, the art style that. was amazing. Like the art mm. style and art direction was fabulous, and the cinematography was fabulous, but the writing for me on that show was mm. was a little weak, and that's why. I you know i get why it was nominated 100 mm-hmm. percent um i enjoyed gran turismo like that was a pretty like entertaining like movie but i wouldn't say it was worth a nomination for best adaptation but we're so short on video game adaptations <laughs> there actually aren't that many uh it's put in the nomination <laughs> say like, oh it's a video game let's put it in there um but yeah like and mario i, I really enjoyed the mario movie like if, for me it was between last of us and the mario movie but i actually think the last of us adaptation because they did so much extra with it as well they expanded on so many great moments like the like bill like like that whole episode like legit like bawling like it was really good <laughs> that um, that part i will actually say based on something that wasn't in well was in the game but only through mm. finding yeah, accounts <laughs> uh, yeah. di- found, yeah. finding accounts of i will say that episode itself jesus on it's, its own good. was great was just a nomination of, worth a nomination just on its own that episode. some of the best television i have seen in years yeah and and the cast like um Be- bella who played um ellie was phenomenal um like um what's his name who played joel was surprisingly absolutely incredible too so i would have liked the cast to get a little bit more recognition when they were accepting but i get that they had a limitation but i was like why are you not mentioning the actors why are you not mentioning you're mentioning sony and all these big wigs here who financed it why are you not mentioning the creative team behind it the the you know all of the special effects and the clickers looked incredible and the the team that worked on it, you know what I mean? So even that rushing the speeches really irritate me because of that. I was like, he didn't even mention the actors, but it was a worthy uh, winner, I think, for uh, for um, adaptation. Um, Edge, uh, were there any, like, Game Awards, that, like, award winners that you were, like, surprised by? Or did most win what you thought would win? Was there anything that you were like, oh, I didn't see that coming kind of thing? It was always going to be a bit of a toss-up between, like, <laughs> For some of them. I mean, uh, I, I agreed with best multiplayer, I mean, being Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, um, multiplayer is so good I in that. I don't understand how Diablo 4 was a nominated one there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I agreed on the best multiplayer. Uh, Game of the Year, I agree on that one. Um, because it just... I'm still playing it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, that just shows, to me personally, that how good a game it was. Yeah. Um, I was a bit kind of surprised by best narrative with Alan Wake. I haven't played much Alan Wake. Mm-hmm. I know really, and so I don't know how good the narrative is. Uh, it's a kind of been like a sleeper thing. I've not heard much about it. So you'd have you guys might have to tell me. When well, you I haven't. Play pl- it. I haven't played Alan Wake too think, either. It, but again, I think Alan Wake's a difficult one for me to jump on board with because again, as I said, I'm not a fan of the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I, I suppose it's the one that took me by surprise when I was reading the results of how much Alan Wake 2 cleaned up on. Yeah, because it came out really I, late and the critics yeah. loved it. Absolutely loved it. They lapped it up. Mm. Um, I would say I, best music with FF16. I, uh, yeah, I was no, pleased. I, I was so pleased <laughs> that the FF16 won, won best music. But I, I found out more about like the guy that like apparently he was in his hospital bed having had chemotherapy when he was like yeah when he was making that music so i was annoyed that it wasn't even like a proper like award presentation it was just done on the side um, but i'm so pleased he won it because the music was so incredible in final fantasy 16 and it's slight it's amazing and it's a slight tangent but it's amazing what that can do for the inspirational process because i mean one of the things um, out of the lego franchise the bionicle series was inspired by a guy going through chemotherapy the yeah. entire thing he says he's inspired that yeah. so yeah it's it's a shame that that element is never focused on enough yeah so for, for the was, individual's credit 
Mm. I was I was hoping he would win because he does a lot of the music for Final Fantasy fourteen. Yeah. So a lot of the dungeons or boss battle music, uh, even the trailer music, he does a lot of that. So mm. you could tell like how much influence was was, was into sixteen with that. Mm. Um, and he was he was still dealing with chemotherapy while doing the music for Endwalker and and, Star- and, and Shadowbringers as well. Yeah. So yeah, no, absolutely amazing. Uh, composer and yeah. writer. Yeah, I'm pleased Definitely. he won that because I, I I did think that it would win. Like it was one of my predictions, so I was really happy to see that it did deservedly win. Um, any other ones? I'd say my biggest pleasure that to come out of it was finally seeing Pikmin get some <laughs> recognition of any kind. Best sim strategy. Yeah, and sim strategy. it's up against some hell of a yeah, as yeah. good contenders. I yeah. mean Fire uh, Emblem, uh, Advance yeah. Wars one and two reboot, mm. Company Heroes, City Skylights. Mm. It's up against some big hitters. Mm. And yet I have uh, yeah, and anyone who's watched me appear on any of these, you'll hear me talk about <laughs> Pikmin. And I, I have never felt this game has got its credit. So I was just so happy to finally not only see it nominated, but win. Win some, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and I really hope this is the start of this franchise after all this time mm-hmm. getting the attention and love it really deserves. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. When we were talk- talking earlier about people that just didn't get a chance to even come on stage or talk or weren't present and such, it's like best independent game, Sea of Stars. Yeah, that yeah. that deserve- want to hear more about that. Cause... And they, I've I've watched the guy interviewed, like you know the 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 head of the studio. He's really inspiring. Like mm. when you actually watch him be interviewed, he's such a passionate, lovely guy, and uh, he deserved his moment like mm. completely because he was on friend friends per second podcast they do some oh, really right. good yeah. podcasts and they interview developers and different things they get a lot of people on and um yeah they did one where they interviewed the the team behind sea of stars and yeah like i was like oh i'm even more interested like after hearing him like yeah and it, it, i hear it's such a great game I'm very mm. interested in picking it up. To be fair, I just need the time. Yeah. <laughs> to play yeah. It. Well, once again, with all these so RPGs, beautiful. so many. But I'm yeah. I played the demo, and I'm like, yeah, I'm. Same. I will be playing that. Yeah. Very soon. I played the demo in the um, Steam Fest, and I really mm. enjoyed it. I was like, this is great. This is really fun. Um. Yeah. And the turn best debut combat. indie as well for uh, Cocoon. Cocoon. That's, that's another one. Worthy that, winner. Um, that i'm going for yeah it's uh, a nice small game as well apparently you can beat it in like four or five hours or something give or take is what i hear so it's a pretty self-contained game uh and it's on game pass as well like uh so you can pick it up on there but that really feels like a game that would be good to play handheld so i'm, t- yeah. I'm kind of tempted to buy it on switch just to play it <laughs> handheld there's a lot of games like that this year there was a lot of really good indie games this year dave the diver cocoon mm-hmm. hi-fi Stretch. rush i was really pleased to see yeah, hi-fi got... rush get best audio design mm-hmm. i really enjoyed that game i played it early on in the year really enjoyed it i would I, I was kind of hoping it would get best art direction rather than alan wake 2 because the mm-hmm. art style is is so unique um in hi-fi rush and it's just it's so striking um yeah. so i would have picked hi-fi rush over alan wake 2 um I-, I was surprised that alan wake 2 got as many awards as it did um but then i'm not overly surprised because the the actual winners that's chosen from the game awards um it is like the 90 percent of the voting comes from critics uh, and 10 percent comes from the public so yeah, no. if it had had it been a public vote maybe alan wake 2 wouldn't have won as much because not as many people have probably played it Right. It's a double-edged sword because so. if you have critics versus fans, yeah, yeah, and I again to rip with that band-aid off, <laughs> there's there is a proportion of people who will just vote for a game because they want. There, there's no common sense when it comes to awards. Sometimes, mm-hmm. like otherwise, you'd probably have Fortnite. You probably have like a like Genshin Impact. Like all like like the the games that will win every year for certain things. I'm like, why you never looked at these games? So mm. the critics, I can understand, are there to kind of actually have an objective view as long as they're doing their job correct. Mm-hmm. As long mm-hmm. as they are actually not like they're being endorsed to pick something over and somebody else. Yeah. As long as they're critiquing correctly, um, you do get to see some 
difference in terms of the awards so variety because um, they're more likely yeah. to have played all of these games whereas like i've tried to do community game awards in the past like with the channel and it's so hard to do because it's like well i, I could vote but i haven't played that game so i don't know whether or not my, i'm only voting for the games that i've played as opposed mm. to like you know so mm -hmm. I, I think doing any kind of awards things with the public is really hard because people are going to vote more for the games that they have played um rather than you know for the for the actual like just like justly deserve yeah. winner um so I, I think in a way yes i think having critics actually nominate and get the majority of the vote does make sense because they are will have more likely a, across the team played all of the games right and mm -hmm. reviewed all of the games so it does make sense um yeah there was a lot of like winners like this this year um like i, I kind of like best action game i think was armored core um yes. six i haven't played armored core i'm really pleased to see like from soft get recognition because obviously they're known obviously for for uh dark souls you know uh games and elden ring so it's kind of mm -hmm. cool to see them do something not souls like um and get recognition for it personally i think i picked remnant 2 in that because uh, dante and i played that this year and it was phenomenal um and you know, uh, but I do hear Amakor is fun, and I know it is a game that Dante wants. So uh, it is very, very good. We're probably even get to even play though it. the award okay. show just glossed over it when in. <laughs> it yeah, it did. It's like in off. a side like, nomination type okay. thing, uh, which is cool. Um, so yeah, like I, I actually did a bit of a like bingo thing this year with game awards. So like I, I kind of predicted which games, and out of twenty like nominations, like categories i got 13 which isn't bad um so i think i did better this year <laughs> than i did the previous year but i also played quite a few games this year surprisingly because i had a lot of time obviously i haven't made as much content with the channel this year just because i was struggling um with my neck and my back so i've kind of just games have been a bit of a uh, a uh a, a, a lifeline <laughs> shit for me um so i've been like playing downstairs on the sofa or just watching dante play a game <laughs> together like if i haven't felt up to it so i play more games this year which has been kind of nice um which is good and i'm still working on a few to try and finish before end of the year um but yeah so yeah i thought there were some i thought all of the games that won deserve to win there wasn't any winners that made me go oh, no that's complete rubbish like they shouldn't have won like i didn't have any of that um because i even thought all the nominations i was like yeah any game in those nominate like 2023 has been such a high mm, standard of games stacked. and like quality games this year that all of the nominate nominees deserved like to I be there so. I know that e I know that esports aren't really your thing, but I'll tell no, you what, I'd like yeah. to see the esports category get some new introductions. Oh yeah, oh, so, always so, League of Legends uh, or Valorant or yeah, yeah. Valorant, League yeah. of Legends, yeah. Dota. It's it's yeah. the same lot every. Oh, it's Splatoon I three in there. Yeah, <laughs> like, absolutely. Or Smash Bros. or whatever. Mm. <laughs> like, that would involve some organising, though, in the first place. Well, Nintendo the hate their esports. They're trying to <laughs> slowly kill it, aren't they, they from the sounds yeah, of it? So. But, uh, but yeah, I agree with you. Um, there, there aren't that many, I, I guess. Um, I think they were hoping for Overwatch 2 um, being in being a big, <laughs> big esports <laughs> thing, but then they, they absolutely <laughs> killed their <laughs> own <laughs> games. So, exactly. And they probably were hoping, like, you know, for other multiplayer games, like, I don't know, like diablo 4 or whatever but um yeah so so yeah so good worthy winners i thought yeah the winners were fine i just wish they'd been given longer um more time in the spotlight so let's move on to some of the announcements then um that we were kind of interested in um i'm going to go last on this because i do have a long list but i'll let you guys cover <laughs> i don't want to like go through them all and you've got nothing else to talk about so i'm gonna let, i've made that mistake before and i'm not making it again okay <laughs> I made it with Diana in the last in the last podcast. She she still never let me live it down. So, uh, Dante, do you want to go first? So you don't have to go last like you had to in the last podcast. You can go first. So, any announcements uh, that you were interested in? Um, Visions of Manor. I think that was one oh, that was definitely yeah. Yeah. curious about because it did look very much like a almost open worldy free roaming or some of Secret of Manor, but. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I could get down with that. I like the idea of that. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, um, and then 
uh, yeah, I don't want to go into too many in case other people got, but like go ahead, the, say what you want. Um, <laughs> the weird uh, remakes of all the old classic oh, Sega games. Oh yeah, that looked interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy, a bit of crazy taxi, taxi and, jet yeah. set. Yeah, and um, yeah, and then, and then you went squeeing at the gold. I squeed at gold mats because I I grew up playing gold mats. Like my some of my fondest memories were when I was a kid, and my mum worked at a bowling alley, and she would basically I'd ha- I'd go to work with her, and she'd give me like money, like you know coins or whatever, and I'd go and play on the arcade machine, and I would always <laughs> play on golden axe, and I'd spend just like so much time playing golden axe. Like, but I always played this like the female. Either the dwarf guy or like the female kick ass girl. <laughs> like, dwarf guy was uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it looked very different though, didn't it? Like more third person action kind yeah, of than, I, than the side scroller that we're used to. I hope it's got some soul about it rather than just kind so. of. But oh, it Sega. looks good, but it's like, meh. Nah. It's yeah, Sega. Not... So anything goes when it comes to Sega. So we'll have to wait and see. But I'm going to go in optimistic and hope it's not going to suck. As so long mm-hmm. as it doesn't suck, then that's fine. <laughs> like, I wonder if these will all come out as individual games or like a collection. It's a good mm. point. I'm not yeah. Sure. I'm curious because... I think they'll be individual. but mm, um, Maybe. Mainly because I think it'd be difficult. It's such an eclectic bunch of games. I think you'd struggle to have yeah. a target market <laughs> just to go, here's all of them. <laughs> I'm going to buy the collection just for Crazy Taxi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and play nothing but Crazy Taxi. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it'd be a hard sell if it was uh, yeah, yeah. all in one. Yeah. If they remake Skies of Acadia from the Dreamcast, I'm like, I'm done. It's like, that's it. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> Goodbye, it's life. Like, I'm like, fuck Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, I'm playing that. Really? Oh my god. That, those, I will are, die those, that are some, those are some big words. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, anything else, Dante? Um, I don't know if I want to talk about Light No Fire or not. <laughs> Well, oh, you mentioned it now. Mentioned it now, so we may as well talk about it. Yeah, oh, no, obviously. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, games. Was anyone else like when when Sean Murray got up on stage and he's like, "This is the most ambitious game we've we've ever made." I'm like, Sean, Sean, don't do it, buddy. Don't do it, buddy. Guy, guys. Yes, it's I was like, world don't, game. don't do yeah, it, buddy. You, you, you've done this before. Yeah. You've overpromised before. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I'm pretty sure yeah. everyone else he's in like... the audience was thinking the same thing. <laughs> He's like Peter Monley with Pat, like version 2.0 with like Fable. <laughs> yeah, and Fable's just announced, like, you can watch his tree grow up and then die, and you know, <laughs> all sorts of crazy shit, and that never happened. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and, and it's like, I don't know, I, there were times when you guys have said to me, like, g- games, and I, I, don't, I don't mean to be the jaded guy, but I'm going to be that guy. And then you go, oh, it's going to be amazing, it's going to be amazing, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> it did look pretty good though like the stuff but, but then it's like how how accurate is it? is it is it just like proof of concept that you're actually showing me here so this is kind of more like a uh an actual like uh you know a lift of the game like is it actually going to be like this how no, is it going to work like are you going to play multiplayer going, no but they'll do better this time they'll do better if i like stop you no I've, I've lost he's all slapping you with his <laughs> <laughs> with his like imaginary kind of you know what in the face. Yeah. But like, while know, Jeff know. was talking to him, it was like Here we go. It's like here <laughs> we go. That's literally what his words were. Here yeah, we go. Prob- yeah. Probably the game Big Walk that also got revealed is probably gonna be a hundred times better. <laughs> mm. Even though it doesn't look as realistic and fancy. It's like that's mm. I don't know. I mean it looked it looked gorgeous, you know, it looked pretty mm. cool. Uh, yeah, and then when when it got on the flying Yeah, and, yeah. there was like building and crafting and then and then like exploration. Then I think he got on like a dragon, like a little flyy thing, and I was like, Ooh, that's cool, you can fly, that's cool. <laughs> um but yeah, I don't know. I mean what did you think of a fish? Um honestly I think there was nothing there that really grabbed me um certain things that made me go yeah all right i'm interested in that oddly enough one of them being world of goo too i knew um, as soon as i saw I, that i I, 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 that. I I got i got horribly addicted to with the original world of goo yeah, yeah, um yeah. and it was a nice little game mm-hmm. um so yeah i'm pleased by that um i just scrolling through for some reminders uh the other one 
Um, was it actually announced, or am I imagining the the obvious one, which was Monster Hunter World, which Monster Hunter Wild? No, w- Wild, Wilds, oh, Monster Hunter Wilds. Yeah. Um, and again, not as absolutely passionate as the three of you are, but still enjoy. I, I think with each iteration of Monster Hunter that comes out, I get more and more into it. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm certainly again now looking forward to this new one. It has made me realize that I have until 2025 to buy a better PC. <laughs> same, same. So that is I'm now the target. Is, I, 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 that is basically the target now is I, I will have a new PC capable of running it without flaw um, <laughs> by the time Monster Hunter comes out. I just hope the game is actually now capable of uh, running without flaw under its own Steam, regardless of my PC. That's the thing as well, is whether or not it'll come <laughs> out on console first, because all the Monster Hunter games have come out on consoles first and announced. PC second. It was so. announced for all three Xbox. Oh, that's PS5. good. If you watch on the trailer, it shows all three icons at that's the same time. much better, because I always felt bad for the PC community that they had to wait. Obviously, they had to make sure that the PC port was good, right? And uh, yeah. often it came with DLC and stuff, but... <clears throat> that's cool if they're going to release at the same time then, um, which mm-hmm. is really awesome. Obviously, that's a big one for you, Edge. I was going to assume yeah. that you were going to talk about Monster Hunter Wild. So what was your initial impression of it when you saw it? Uh, so as I was watching the trailer, Strife, who is also <laughs> at my two blokes play playing Monster Hunter, he literally texted me as I was watching the trailer. Uh-huh. Um, I am excited mm-hmm. because... Um, I loved World, and that's been around for a long time now. Mm. I've enjoyed Rise, and each iteration has gotten, like Chris has mentioned, more and more um, quality of life changes uh, to make it more accessible to players. Um, looking at the the map as a whole, it reminds me of certain mechanics from World that you may have gotten into, which is like the Guiding Lands. So mm-hmm. I think as right. time... Again, this is all conjecture based on what I've seen, potentially you might be able to affect what you see. Mm-hmm. And in which case, that could be... I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing more, because we know they're going to mention more in the summer, I think, of next year. And 2025 release, I think it's going to be probably spring to March that it's going to come out. Like mm-hmm. how World mm-hmm. first came out in March of that year, or January. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm, I'm very excited for it. Uh, I know uh, Strife is... Uh, he's now playing Gunlance in preparation for it. Um, <laughs> okay. I hear but... you can carry two weapons now. Yeah, isn't it? I want two long swords. Let's go. Oh lord, that's a good <laughs> thing. You can jump up in the air and like double slash down. It would be <laughs> badass. I think you're supposed to mix. What, what, oh, no, I, don't know. I know, I know. I, I want two long swords. That's what I want. <laughs> it is going to be one of my most anticipated games of 2025, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two long swords, though. I mean, you trip out. O- it's bad enough you trip everyone else up. Run. You then would trip <laughs> yourself able up. To run. I, they'd just be dragging along the ground behind me. I'd have to play a big beef, wheel, two beefy dude, guns, don't I? Yeah. yeah. Not only really a big mean... beefy dude, but a dude with maybe like seven <laughs> foot legs, legs alone. Yeah. <laughs> I did really enjoy Monster Hunter World. I didn't enjoy Monster Hunter Rise as much. Um, so I'm hoping it, it is a little bit more on par with Monster Hunter World and Iceborne. Um, I like the mount. The mount looked really cool. Um, and just when it was gliding as well, it just, it looked really funky. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely up for playing it, um, and checking it out. I really enjoyed playing World and Iceborne a lot. Um, cause we, I put like 400 hours into that game um when we played it a few years ago quite a few years ago now so i'm looking forward to that um was there any other announcements edge that you were interested in, other than monster hunter wilds yeah there was a couple um dragon ball sparking zero as people mm. may be aware uh if you can see my background in my in my man cave i have a massive dragon ball collection um and I, i've grown up on the dragon ball uh to budokai tenkaichi games mm-hmm. um and budokai games I am cautious about it, though, purely mm. because with Bandai Namco, and I know that I'm going to get hate on this, they are known for some pretty annoying DLC practices. Mm. So, yeah, like putting characters behind paywalls. Yeah, and I think Xenoverse was, or Xenoverse 2 had a lot of DLC. Mm. So I'm going to be cautiously optimistic, wait to see more coming out and see what the roster is, and then I mean, I'm still going to love it if it's good, 
but yeah. I'm gonna. I mean, the roster, the roster is important for me. Like, don't hold back important characters. Like, if we want to have the game, and then if you want to add extra stuff into it, by all means. But don't gimp on it because mm. uh, I'm just gonna. I'll have like an Anchor Joe rant at that point, <laughs> and you don't want to see me ranting. Um, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, Persona Three Remake um, and uh, Rise of the Ronin. I'm thinking yeah. in March. I, yeah. I is that from Team about... Ninja? That's from the guys that made Neo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's got multiplayer in it or not from the look of it, but the trailer mm. looks interesting. The mm. thing is, I, I enjoyed Ghost of Tsushima, and it just feels like I'm playing that again, almost. Mm. So we'll just see how it goes in terms of that. I like the setting. I like the art style, but again, it's going to be Soulsborne, and and I always struggle <laughs> with those games. I, I I like challenging games, but I don't like games that like will pummel me into the ground, and I have to like push through a wall, you know, to kind of uh, to kind of get. I play games to relax <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Um. So, but I I do like the setting, and it looks very cool. Um. So I am curious as well. That was one that I was kind of curious about. And I do own Neo and Neo 2. I still haven't got around to playing them. But Team Ninja are a good development team. So yeah. we'll have to see. Was there anything else? Um, Metaphor Refantasio. I thought that might be one that you were interested um, in. That game looks that's crazy. Out, that's out the second half of the year, I believe, of next yeah. year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean... There's too many games coming out in the first five months of 2024. <laughs> mm. I'm glad that's coming out near the end mm. um, because I I hear I mean there's Grand Blue Fantasy coming out next year in mm. February. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm dead. I'm going to be dead <laughs> tired from mentally. I mean, a lot of it's going to be on Game Pass, so I'm fine with that. Yeah, but I'm just, it's going to destroy me mentally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> metaphor metaphor refantazo tazio. It's a hell of a name. Who came up with that name? Honestly. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like ridiculous name. Um, but it's obviously from the team that made Persona 5, Persona 4, Persona 3. And it's yep. Atlas, isn't it? So I I freaking loved Persona 5 um, and loved it, loved it. And I am actually interested in it because it's from that team. But it's a completely new IP, which I'm excited for. Like something totally new for them. Um, but the trailers just look insane. Like I don't know what to make of the trailers. I'm like, I have no idea what I am watching. It looks crazy. The story looks insane. Um, oh, yeah. But I'm down for it. I'm definitely down for it. And I'm looking forward to checking it out. And if, and if the, and I, I kind of really enjoyed the turn-based combat in uh, Persona 5, which I'm assuming it's going to be turn-based. Um, um, I'm going to watch it to find out. I think it is from the looks of it. Um, so I'm kind of curious to check that out. Um, so yeah, there was quite a few for me. Um, that was kind of interesting. There was quite a couple of indie games actually. Um, that I was kind of interested in. There was Windblown, uh, which is from the team that did um, Dead Cells, and that mm. looked gorgeous. Uh, the art style looked really cool, and uh, also it's three-player multiplayer as well which yeah. is really cool um, like that, yeah and it changed perspective it's like top down perspective but it changed a little bit i loved it it looked very cool um the other one was um tales of ken sarah zao which had very like prince of persia oh. lost crown vibes in that it was looked like a 2d metroidvania but the guy that got up on stage and talked about that like he got because he was talking about obviously dedicating the game obviously to his um you know recently passed dad and he got really emotional about it and i was like oh my god <laughs> like and uh, so that made me more interested and it, it looked cool it looked, it looked really interesting um the ori the creators of ori no rest for the wicked that looked cool um that's from the creators of ori obviously a very similar art style, gorgeous art style, but like more of a fantasy, much darker tone to Ori. Um, so that looked really, really cool. I was really interested in that. Um, the new Exodus, which is actually from um, a brand new studio called Archetype 
Entertainment, which was that that had Matthew McConaughey come up on stage and be like, I'm in a game, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and um, so it's basically it's interstellar, like in a game, <laughs> effectively. Um, but I'm more interested because it's 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 a veteran team of ex Bioware developers and one of the lead writers on it, it one of the lead writers on it is Drew Capishan. Right. You guys know who that is? Well, I do. That's the lead writer <laughs> no. behind Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2. Ah. So well, I can see why there would be like interest in. <laughs> the ultimate sci-fi writer and he writes really good stuff. Like so I'm very interested the fact that cuz he like just left the game industry to like write novels and books and things and he's come back <laughs> to work like he's working at the studio. So and it, I think it's got ex uh, Naughty Dog developers in there as well and 343 x343 343 developers and things like that. But it looks really really cool. But again well, it's all cinematic. <laughs> X doesn't yeah, mean, yeah, we can't do it. Yeah, but yeah, also X is not to be confused with that Exo Born game, which was more the division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, there's too many games beginning with X. Yeah, there is. But it looked kind of cool. Um, Hellblade Senua Saga. I'm of course, very yeah, that's... interested in. Um, the first game was my game of the year when it came out. Um, so I'm very interested in that. We said a rough 2024 release, but we don't know when. But yeah, um, Last Sentinel looked kind of funky, which was like this kind of like cyberpunk themed like robot like, uh... set in like Tokyo. Mm. Like it looked kind of cool. It had like a female protagonist and and like like uh, yeah. it looked pretty funky. But again, it's cinematic, so like. It's no gameplay, you know. We've not actually seen any gameplay, so I don't know what this game is going to look like. Um, all same with Exodus, but I liked the concept. I thought the concept looked pretty cool. Mm. Um, and then obviously, um, uh, Arcane Leon are working on a new Blade game, which came mm. completely out of left field, and that's uh, going to be third Mark. person um yeah that guy who comes up from marvel i don't trust a word that leaves his mouth to be fair he's so p p pr like kind of kind of guy but um but he's you know i mean to be fair the Mar marvel games that we have had like spider-man and obviously insomniac are working on a wolverine game and i'm kind of interested I, I really did think that um like arcane leon were gonna announce dishonored 3 because that is the rumor that, that uh, they're working on a dishonored 3 but they're like nah we're working on a blade game um and again it's just a cinematic but mm -hmm. third person looks cool he's got a gun he's got he's got his blade oh i hope it's the blade like in the film where like if you <laughs> you know you grab the handle and it like like cut your hand off you know because you got the blades ah i hope it does something from the game or something you know from the movies because i love i love the blade movies um uh, with wesley snipes so i'm very interested to play in and and it's set in paris which is different because blade i think usually is new york i think so it's kind of interesting because it's set in paris it's going to be dark it's third person which is totally new for for arcane because they only usually do first person games um so i'm very interested to see more i got kind of excited about that um i like blade so so i think that'll be yeah. good so there are a couple of like announcements this year that i was kind of like okay i wait to see more mm -hmm. <laughs> you have my interest show me <laughs> gameplay then we'll decide <laughs> basically but yeah i didn't think it was too bad in terms of announcements but yeah i could have done with less less although fortnite looks crazy now in terms of like the rocket rocket league team racing, working on the racing what, rocket yeah. game lego now doing which apparently has been amazing it's had like 2.5 million people playing it and it's really yeah. good apparently um fortnite's become a whole institution man like roblox, <laughs> like, no replacement like roblox or something. yeah yeah um <laughs> So, so yeah i'm still not playing it but you know <laughs> got too many other games to play but uh but yeah there were some good announcements so obviously let us know what you guys thought of the game awards uh in the comment section below were there any winners like that you weren't or were happy about games that you thought should have won uh, and let us know obviously what announcements you were interested in and uh, obviously are looking forward to please share those in the comment section below so we're going to move on to the third part a uh, third and final part of the podcast which is community questions message coming in patching it through 
we want to know what you want to know. Okay, so we have two questions uh, from the community, which are good questions, really, because they kind of wrap up the year and reflect on the year. So the first question um, is from Ash's channel, and that is, what game of 2023 do you regret spending time playing? Or like mm -hmm. any games that were like a disappointment? <laughs> I already know what Edge is going to say, so I'm going to go with Edge first, because I already know what he's going to say. So Edge... You've been biding your time and waiting. No regrets. Unleash it. Go. What game were you? Did you regret playing this year? FF sixteen. No, I'm joking. No. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no Diablo four. Fuck that game. <laughs> Fuck that up the ass. Shame. Yeah. I'm gonna get the. I'm gonna get the square jar out. But no, seriously. <laughs> At first, when I was playing from the very beginning of that, it was exciting. I never played Diablo again before, mm. but. Then it just started as you were getting further and further into the game, it just mm. was boring, absolutely boring. Um, the they kept tweaking it when I completed the game with Strife and then started doing their first seasonal content. You have to make a new character, and just to grind on that, you have the microtransactions absolutely but pointless. The narrative was. shit. Mm. Um, the 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 storyline. There was more story in Fire Emblem Engage than there was in this. And and, and I mean, we know that Fire Emblem Engage is a, is like a very Japanese kind of like anime ish game. Yeah, I'm fine with that at this point. I don't know what I'm paying for with that. But with Diablo, I was thinking, okay, you know, Blizzard have this wood rich lore with Diablo <laughs> games. I'm gonna see maybe a bit of that and maybe understand the world a bit. No, it's absolutely run here. Do this. Run there. Have a cinematic. Run here. Why am I caring about what is going on here? There's nothing that's making me want to play it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there was there was the saving graces was that some of the multiplayer aspects were easy to jump to, to jump in. So I could be level one, and I could jump in with someone who's level twenty, and we can still play. So the multiplayer in that aspect was was okay, but in terms of just like everything in general it was very boring very repetitive and just not and for the price just no mm. um and i don't i i don't agree with the like the, the dlc especially when they put the fucking button at the bottom <laughs> on the seasonal content of um they put like a button literally where you could pay for like microtransaction funds and the playstation thing i was like what so the fuck bad. are you doing yeah it's Yuck. It's, it's absolutely like lazy um mm -hmm. and there's been lots of like they've tried to redeem it it's just no no mm -hmm. blizzards like i don't really buy any of their games in the past i've I never i mean i played a vanilla wow when it first came out mm -hmm. uh, world of warcraft but i've not I've, I've not touched any of their games and i thought because Shrek recommended it oh, this, is, this could be kind of fun really get into playing something mm. new and very exciting and fantasy based multiplayer mm. no it's absolutely repetitive shit I'm glad um, I didn't pick it up then, because <laughs> yeah. I was I was like tempted to. I was curious about it because I've never played a Diablo <laughs> game, and I was like, maybe this will be the one. And I'm like, I'm gonna wait and see, because because I I don't really trust Blizzard anyway uh, as a developer. I don't think they're as good as people say they are. They're not the studio they used to be. Um, that's why I was surprised that you know Microsoft paid so much money for Activision and Blizzard. Um, but. Yeah, uh, that's really disappointing to hear. Um, obviously. Um, have you got any other games, or was it just just Diablo, just Diablo for you? Diablo mainly. Yeah. Um, in terms of other games that I regret spending time playing, mm -hmm. um, Wild Hearts. I enjoyed the initial bit, but then mm. the end game, there's nothing there. Yeah, so right. okay. it felt like there was so much potential there, and I kind of wanted to see more. Of that, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we what we did play, I really enjoyed, but it was too short. Mm -hmm. I kind of regret playing it now. Like I was kind of hoping that they would have brought more in. Maybe you got paying I mean, full price for it rather than yeah. I, I think if it had been a bit cheaper, then I would have been like, that's fine. But yeah, yeah. Um, I'm hoping that they'll learn from what they've done mm -hmm. and make a better end game content mm -hmm. for a sequel. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I enjoyed what I played, but I kind of regret that one. Well, other than that, I've been quite lucky. Like most of the games I've played this year, mm -hmm. have been fairly worth buying. So mm -hmm. I've not had any regrets too much with that. That's good. Cool. 
Fish, what about you? Any games that you regretted playing I'm this year? I'm pleasant to say. I'm pleasant no? to say no. I can't yeah, think of a single good. thing. So uh, that's yeah, good. that's good. Nothing I've played this year that I regret. I think you also do your research a little bit, don't you? Before you yeah, pick up games um, and I, things. So I, ever ever a lot of since do that now. Yeah, ever since No Man's Sky. Yes, I I do my research. Um, I was going to say did. Pokemon didn't come out this year, did it? Its DLCs yeah, come out, but year, yeah. that was last year. So again, no, nothing this year. Okay, that's good. good. Year. That's good. That's good. It's been a good year, 2023, to be fair. Dante? Yeah, kind of similar boat, except I kind of, not like regret, but kind of uh, Starfield. Uh, I could have left off starting that because now, now I'm in it. I'm kind of stuck right. wanting to finish it. Right. But it's just kind of dragging on. I'm it's not, not gripped you. No, and I hear some updates for like the awkward maps and other stuff are coming out. So it's like, oh, if I waited a bit longer as well. Yeah. But it's like, oh, I could be getting on with better games. I thought that Starfield, everyone was hyping it up and like mm. really doing all that. And uh, mm. I expected a bit more of it. But it's somehow the more I play it, the more repetitive it gets in a way, even though it's yeah. so fast it's bizarre yeah so it's it's it, it is crazy because it's still using i think very old-fashioned like like level like game kind of design like structure like in terms of like the the quest designs and things it's still very mm. old-fashioned like in terms of bethesda yeah. and like just even like inventory management and stuff like that and and like loading screens and things like that yeah. so yeah I've... i i think i think we've become like so used to like games that are like trying to push new things so it, it feels very much like starfield is playing it safe right like, yeah. yeah and and when a game you find yourself messing around with the inventory more than actually playing the damn missions yeah, that's not good which i've always <laughs> lost so much time yeah, just yeah. laughing yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. yeah, I agree. Like, I'm I'm about seventy five hours into it, um, and I really enjoyed like the first kind of forty or fifty hours or so. I got I got quite into it, especially the shipbuilding side of it, which was really really good. So yeah, like it just the more the the further into it I get, the the more you do kind of see that. I, I think you have to focus on like the quests, like the the faction quests are some of the best parts of it i would say and the companion yeah. quests and things like that whereas i think you got like distracted by other things <laughs> spent a lot of time like mid-maxing your leveling <laughs> like, gluten and stuff um whereas the loot is like a bit meh um meh. i feel in starfield so so yeah so for so for someone who's such a big looter looter kind of gamer <laughs> um i can understand that like completely um for me like I, I don't regret playing like i never regret playing games because of obviously i do play a lot of games for the channel um just 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 in terms of like covering it and, he, and even one of the games that i was disappointed in this year i don't regret playing it because i got given a review code for the game which obviously was for spoken and I don't mm. regret playing it because I did a review of it and therefore I got to get my thoughts out there and sort of say, maybe hold off on this, right? And I got to sort of talk about the good elements and the bad elements. But yeah, I was disappointed um, a lot um, with that game, like the storytelling in Forspoken. Um, but yeah, the storytelling in Forspoken was just awful <laughs> to the point of, painful um to the point of i hate all of these characters like i don't like any character um which is really bad and i'm not used to that in a game like at least i can find someone right did i freeze yeah right <laughs> so i said like i said obviously in the story like the writing was really terrible uh in forspoken and i find myself like just not liking any of the characters which is a huge like Usually I could find someone to like, like in a story, but I didn't like any of them and the main character as well. The combat was a little fun uh, with the magic, like magic-based combat and the parkour. There's a whole review to check out. But go check out my review. Um, yeah, so I was disappointed with that. The other one I was also really, I don't regret playing it because I played it with friends, but the other one I was super disappointed with this year as well was Destiny 2 Lightfall expansion. 
um because obviously i jumped into destiny 2 Mm -hmm. last year Uh, i jumped in at witch queen which was probably like like was the peak of where destiny 2 was it's really good obviously i have a, a fire team that i play with so i had fun because i played with friends but I was super disappointed um, in the expansion. It just felt like filler. Um, it's supposed to be like wrapping up, you know, the light darkness saga, obviously, in, in the new final shape, which is coming out next year in June. But it just, the story went nowhere. It didn't answer any questions. It felt like filler. Um, they'd, they'd just changed a lot of the leveling. So they just made things more grindy. <laughs> more bullet spongy more difficult unnecessarily difficult right um in some things so yeah they got a lot of things wrong um did destiny and obviously bungie you know this year has just not been great um in terms of the layoffs and the management and the way they're treating their staff and everything else um so i was super disappointed um in destiny Destiny this year um i am going to play final shape but yeah yeah yeah, because you tra- you started Destiny two, didn't you, Edge? Um, but then uh, obviously didn't carry on. Yeah, I mean, I played Destiny one all the way through, mm. and then stopped briefly, and then continued toward the end. Mm. And then Destiny two, I played for as long as I could. But the issue I have with Destiny is that, like you've just, you've you've just had, they seem to monumentally fuck up. Yeah. Um, so much at the time, mm. like this, it's not. Yeah, I'm guess I'm very arrogant now. It, you cannot keep fucking this up after yeah. so after ten years. <laughs> time we played this together time. when the PS3 first came out. Yeah, <laughs> that's how long this this game series is, and you're fucking telling me you can't learn from the last ten years and fix your shit. Mm. <laughs> and I think I think this is exactly where I think we had this conversation the other day. Um, it's again another video you can go on to the long run is when do we as gamers start to concede that people need to start being, being better yeah. being held accountable mm. said i i can't believe i'm saying this but i will not be getting i, I don't intend on getting the next pokemon game on real on launch day for the first time ever because the last i'm holding you couple, to that i'm gonna hold you to that <laughs> yeah, i said the last uh, yeah and i i want i unless they pull some magic out of their backsides mm. um I genuinely, I, I'm seriously considering it because the last couple of times, um, there's the, the quality just isn't there anymore. Yeah, the rush job of it all. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I, I'd rather that I would rather they go back to a uh, top-down 2D view um, with a well-crafted world rather than an open plan mm. do it yourself world with nothing in it really mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. pop in <laughs> yeah 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 um i think the only other one i was kind of like disappointed and that's for a personal thing it's not not anything on the game because the game is actually fantastic um but i haven't been able to play it and that is resident evil 4 <laughs> it's my biggest regret because i can't play it because i it's i've got really bad motion sickness with it and i've tried every setting i can think to change and i i can't play more than an hour or two without feeling sick to my stomach and having to lie down so that's the other biggest like regret this year i've had a few people ask me like have you finished resident evil 4 i'm like no because I, I i can't bring myself i know the game's gonna make me feel sick and i can't bring myself to play it that work with which is so video? disappointing I'm okay. I don't. Uh, I haven't really watched any video of it because I didn't want to be spoiled. Um, because I did want to play it. Um, and we were playing like small, small snippets of it. But I think when you play a game for like only thirty minutes or an hour at a time, you really lose something yeah. in the playthrough. Because I, I like playing a game and being completely immersed in it, and yeah. and playing it for a couple of hours, right? And and then like, so I don't like picking at a game like that. You know what I mean? Um, it's different when you like games as a service things where you go on and do a few activities and then jump off again, right? But like for a game like that, where you've got the story and the setting and everything, I, I really, I want to play it for like an extended period of time and get better at the combat because you, you struggle to get better at the combat because you're not playing it for an extended period of time to get to get into the swing of it. Yeah, because it makes makes me so nauseous. And then Dante tried playing it too and had the same problem. 
Um, yeah. And I did a video on it and quite a few people commented in the comments on that video that they had the same issue. Uh, and then I had a twat comment, get good. I was like, whatever. It's motion sickness. How do I get good at not having motion sickness? You tell me. I'd love to know. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, but yeah, like I guess that is probably one of my biggest regrets this year is that I didn't get to finish Resident Evil 4, which is a damn good game because of motion sickness which really sucks really sucks um which makes me not want to play any of the other ones because i don't want the same issue (laughs) like i don't know if it's something to do with the way they do the camera or the movement or whatever i've no idea um but i guess we will see so let's move on to the uh the last question then which is a more positive question which is nice (gasps) so um what is your favorite new game that you played this year um and that was asked by curtis simpkins so i'm gonna answer first um my favorite new game that i have played this year which is going to be very predictable is Baldur's (laughs) gate 3 never easily it's easy never heard of it what is that um it's easily my game of the year um it's phenomenal absolutely phenomenal game the writing i never thought i would love a crpg (laughs) like because it's not my kind of genre at all i'm much more of a third person action kind of girl (laughs) like so yeah i was not expecting to enjoy a crpg as much as i did um but i'm loving it from all of the the different builds and the different classes that you can play as the writing is phenomenal the voice acting is absolutely phenomenal every companion is just brilliant every companion um they're so well written and there's just just so much freedom of choice and there are so many ways that you can like approach situations um properly like approach situations like we went into like i've played this game through three times um and like there was one case where we got to like a uh, a camp it was a goblin camp and in one playthrough, Diana got herself arrested and we ended up in the dungeon, which is where we were meant to go to rescue Halson. In another one, I think someone smeared some shit on their face <laughs> to get into the camp. Um, you can do all sorts of things. You can spike the punch bowl and poison it to kill all the goblins in the camp. Uh, it's crazy. It's just crazy. There's so much freedom and choice. We even in one we like, like Sha insulted a goddess, like, and she killed us all, like, and then we had to restart again. Like, there's just some crazy stuff that you can do in that game, and it's so much fun, and I've loved it. And just the dice roll, you never know what's going to happen, and that's fun. Just oh. not knowing what's going to happen, and if your dice doesn't roll like favorably, just go with it and see and and the game carries on and it just rolls and it's just it's just it captures the essence of D D, and even the narrator is just so awesome oh it's so good i'm sorry (laughs) i could just gush about it for ages i genuinely love it and uh, i can't wait for dante to play it because i'm going to get it for him for christmas and we're going to play it together Yes, we're getting yeah. it for Christmas. I'm getting you for Christmas, and we're going to play it together, <laughs> which it's I'm what? really looking forward to. <laughs> it makes me want to learn to play D and D properly. Ah, oh, yeah. so good! It's just so so good. So, um, let's move around then. Um, let's go with uh, Dante. So, Dante, I'm going. To, I'm going to have to figure out what class I'm going to play, what race, what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, look at all the build guys. <laughs> it would take so, life got I... you covered. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, now I, I. I because I haven't played Baldur's Gate, I can't answer that one. No. Um, so yep, true. <laughs> the last game that was making me just smile ear to ear just through playing it was Mario Bros. Wonder. Because <laughs> that was like, yeah, it's it, it's it's good. It's fun. It's just that's, it. and that's what I like. Yeah. It's like no no stress on it, bar some of the challenge levels. But it's like that's, that's end game stuff, you know. But rest of the game is just like, oh, this is fun. It's cute. It's funny. And play. It's just daft. Yeah. So, yeah. Love, love it um that's my answer quick and new. <laughs> mario wonder yeah it's a fantastic yeah. game just the creativity in that game was phenomenal mm-hmm. every level was just so different and i loved all of the different like 
powers and abilities that you got that changed up the yeah. levels and stuff like you know all of the stamps that you got and stuff it just just i i, I loved it i even Watch i broke play. a level one time and <laughs> i took a recording of it because i basically found a secret area uh too early so the flowers down there were like oh you've ruined the surprise you're supposed to do things in a certain <laughs> order i'm like oops <laughs> 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 the fact that they, they think about these little things yeah. and like yeah. reward you in different ways like it's just nintendo having fun mm-hmm. and that's when the players have yeah. fun yeah it was good uh fish uh i'd say exactly the same i'll keep it nice and short and sweet same as dante <laughs> um mario wonder i think by the second level i was grinning from ear to ear and i knew i was in for something special and it proceeded to deliver i've not played a game that online multiplayer wise has felt so wholesome mm. since journey with the mm. idea of you can't directly communicate with people but you can hang around and it was nice to see people genuinely helping each other mm. um it just uh, an absolute pleasure from beginning to end yeah did i burn through it in three days absolutely <laughs> will i play it again absolutely mm. um my six-year-old going on seven-year-old nephew has asked for it for christmas and i cannot wait to play that with him i've bought it for Um, my niece for christmas so (laughs) i genuinely yeah i I, mario wonder has been an absolute treat um and i think uh to go back on the previous point of uh the game awards well and truly deserved its uh award of best family game Mm. i can only imagine yeah what that game has done for households it's yeah. so enjoyable yeah i'm glad it got it got some recognition uh tears of the kingdom did as well i think it won best mm-hmm. adventure game, action adventure it? action yeah. adventure i think yeah which is good but yeah which and, and again for me it's been a strong year because pikmin for tears of the kingdom yeah but I, I purely have to just go for the fact that i spent I all of wonder smiling I, I don't think i was unhappy at any of it yeah, it's just it's such a feel good. Like if you're feeling a bit down, and you want something that's just gonna pick you up and cheer you up, that is the game to play. Like it's just mm. such a feel good game. It's it's so it's so good. Um, Edge. Oh uh, gosh, this is gonna be hard because I played so many good games. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the beginning of the year, there was Fire Emblem Engage. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was Final Fantasy Sixteen, Diablo Four. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, you know, they've all been really popular games. I've really enjoyed playing. Uh, that because you've voted to Diablo Four, that would have been probably oh Baldur's Gate close. Three. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, sorry, Baldur's Gate Three would yeah. have been my. Would have been my. What is why I was saying Diablo? Sorry. I know. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 I hate that game. I hate that game, game. but I love that game. But I hate that game, but I love that game. You meant Baldur's Gate, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baldur's Gate Three. Yeah. Um, so um, I would have picked Baldur's Gate Three, but I think that would be you know too easy, too easy because it is just such a really good game. Yeah. So I'm actually going to go with Final Fantasy Sixteen, uh, nice. just because. It's a good game. There's been so many iconic moments without saying anything to Dante, mm. uh, because I know it will spoil him. Unless, unless you've both seen the game, haven't you? Chris? He's watched know. me play it from oh, start yeah. to finish. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> He's been there the whole way through, enough. but not for the public now. No, because yeah. they might want to play Just it. Just iconic fights, iconic scenes in the story, the voice acting yeah. from, from Clive. Oh, Ben uh, Starr was phenomenal. Yeah absolutely phenomenal oh, and honestly we're not i'm not detracting from the winner of best voice for Baldur's gate 3 mm. um they you know there has to be a loser um you know it can't all be winners but i still think you know phenomenal job if it hadn't have been the Baldur's gate one i would have yeah. wanted ben picked to ben win. star i wanted ben to win Same. personally um, just because you did but, young yeah. clive adult clive and it's yeah. just you can just see the emotion the emotions he's going through it's just amazing mm-hmm. um but yeah final Fantasy 16 Probably I'm going to give it to that one, dude, because it's got such a controversial game. Mm-hmm. Because so many people are ratting on, uh, are hating on it because it's not turn based, not command based. It's so far removed, mm-hmm. and Yoshi P and the team who made it were were given free reign to to make something. Uh, and in terms of what they came out with, I think it's a fine addition. It's a fine Final Fantasy game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people are going to disagree with that, and I, and that's fine. You can disagree. You know, you might prefer seven, you might prefer nine, 
12, 13, you know, I, I've but played every, most... But every Final Fantasy game is different, it's always, is always yeah. different in a little way. They always, they always include something different. I like that about Final Fantasy. The thing is, that I think every entry it as well, is a bit different. Like every Final Fantasy game, without exception, yep. and, I, and I challenge anybody to, in this podcast to come back and say, not every game, but I challenge every Final Fantasy game that has come out... Except maybe sequels, but even then they do they do change hmm. things up. But every, every Final Fantasy game that has come out after 7 has always had a mixed response. Mm. FF8 had haters, FF9 had haters, <laughs> FF10 had haters, Final Fantasy, FF11... Final Fantasy fans, man. They're like, yeah, they're, they're a demanding bunch. <laughs> um, but I hope when it comes out on PC... Yeah. that it gets a lot more love and attention because obviously with oh PS5, god can you imagine the mods i can see oh them now. no no i can see them now <laughs> no we're not having that uh, <laughs> we're not having cat eared like clive we're, not having, we're yeah. not having like like, like... give give clive some chest hair because he's got really like smooth <laughs> chest <laughs> So it's like cats are staring. It's like he clearly waxes. He's got Jill waxing his chest every morning. <laughs> it's like, oh, you, you're Jeff. I'm not having Sephiroth really. mods where like Clive is fighting with. Sephiroth oh no, no. <laughs> well, like in the DLC, he gets the Buster Sword, right? Like that's he one does, of the yeah. DLC things, and I refuse to use it. I was like, no, <laughs> no. Wrong game. Also, it was really crap level of like damage. Like you can make rubbish. it glamour. You can glamour it onto your weapon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I suppose I could have done, but no, only Cloud can have that sword. But uh, here's a good choice. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. That, the high that was, are great. That would be my, because I've played so much of it, I really enjoyed it. Mm. And I would, do, I would go Baldur's Gate 3, but at the same token, I have to think if I'm not playing with other people mm. and playing a solo experience, and I'm, and I'm a poster boy for wanting to play multiplayer games, mm. but for a solo experience, I really enjoyed that. And that's yeah. not saying anything bad about Resident Evil 4. Uh, Five Emblem, mm. uh, Advance Wars, um, Baldur's Gate, uh, any of those other games that we've all come, that have all been coming out, um, they've all been amazing. But that's the one that I think I've had a lot of fun with, mm. included with Baldur's Gate Three. But I'm going to go FF16. It has some standout moments, like oh, even God. when we were playing it and I was playing it, I'm like, oh my God, what what is going <laughs> on? What am I doing? What the? I'm running up Titan's arm. What the hell? Like, this is oh, insane. I love it. <laughs> I was like, absolutely loved every moment. And uh, so I can 100%, 100%. I was sold on the Ifit versus, yeah. versus Life Fight. I'm like, yeah, I'm <sighs> doing my this. top 10 list this year is going to be so difficult <laughs> because there have been so many good games. And that, I, yeah, and even even the into December, I think my top 10 list is probably not going to come out until January because there are still oh, some games I has. need to finish and are wanting to play. Like, I do want to play Alan Wake too. I do want to see what, what the, the hype is about <laughs> and check it out. Um, I need to finish Baldur's Gate 3. I haven't finished it. And, and I have a rule on my top 10 list where I like to finish a game if it's going on there. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. you know, so like, I need to get that played. I hear Avatar: uh, Frontiers of Pandora is beautiful, um, an actual open world game that's really good from Ubisoft. Um, and I, I like Ava- I like Sorry. Avatar, so I'm kind of interested to check it out. Um, Ubisoft. Yeah, but I'm gonna give them a chance because oh, yeah. Ubisoft has had some good games some good games they have had they have done some things like the the mario rabbit sparks of hope was phenomenal absolutely fantastic i re- i played assassin's creed mirage really enjoyed it they went back to sort of traditional assassin's creed so i'm going to give them a shot um and i i am not going in blind i have watched a couple of reviews i have checked out what people are saying about it and there is a lot of positive sentiment surrounding it um so yeah and i think we found it like is it 36 pound or 38 pound or whatever so that's not too bad so i'm i'm gonna check it out and give it a shot and uh, i'll let you guys obviously know what i think of it uh when i have played it um so yeah so okay so that's uh our end of 2023 podcast uh thank you so much guys for joining uh today i really really appreciate it um please do go check out uh, well i don't think fish is doing content at the moment but um nope. edge is uh, might do content on the channel maybe possibly <laughs> maybe in the future um but edge is definitely doing content at the moment um you've got a couple of things planned haven't you edge for like podcasts yeah, or whatever i've got my doing? edge cast reviewing 2023 and doing cool. some episodes coming out for that cool. uh, i've also got two blokes play and yep. i'm happy to do any collabs at the same point 
um yeah it should be exciting cool cool awesome stuff all right then so please do let us know your answers to these questions as well guys in the comments were there any games you played this year that you regretted playing or were disappointments for you and what was your favorite or best game of the year um do let us know in the comment section below share what game you loved and why uh, i'd be really interested actually to hear what the community feels is their favorite game of the year um <laughs> so yeah please do look forward to that um this month as i say probably will be a quiet month in december because i will be just concentrating on playing games <laughs> like playing those games i want to finish um and then obviously january will pick back up in january probably with end of year reviews and things like that um and hopefully next year uh, we can be back again with more normandy news feed podcasts because i've really enjoyed doing these this year uh, so thank you to everybody uh, who has taken the time to watch or listen to them let us know which of the episodes we've done because we've done 10 so let us know which of the episodes you enjoyed the most i'd be really interested to hear uh, your thoughts so please do share that in the comment section below take care everybody uh, have a great week have a lovely christmas and new year uh, enjoy take care everybody and as always happy gaming bye, bye guys we should go <laughs> mm -hmm.